Shalom. Welcome to The Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Dalmar, together with my co-host Mark Ronich of Statewide News Service and jbiztechvalley.com, and now columnist for the Jewish Press. I have a column called The Albany Beat, where I try to talk about how the government relates to the Jewish community. And anyway, today on our program, we have a very special guest with us for the first time, Assemblyman Carl Brabenek. He's of uh, Czech descent. Yes. And uh, we always like the ethnicity, the, the variety of ethnicity at the Capitol. Absolutely. And you represent the 98th Assembly District in Orange and Rockland counties. So welcome to the Jewish View. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invitation to be yeah. here. You know, Mark, you really see from Czech. You know, I also obviously... Uh, wasn't born here. I guess you have to be a Native American to really uh, be here. Uh, to me, that is just the beauty of America. Be I mean, it's one of the beauties. It's a great land. Here, I mean, you, you know, I know as, there's nobody as nobleman and royalty in America as that's what the American Revolution was about. But on the other hand, you're a representative of the people. In a certain sense, it is nobility, if you want to say that. And here, any person, a person comes to America and like the doors are open. You want to be president, you want to be assembly person, you, you want to be, be anything rich. you want to be. Absolutely. It's the beauty. It's really the beauty of it. And you Absolutely. got you know, Mark Jonai, who's uh, from uh, uh, Albania. Mm -hmm. And uh, you have Nili Rozek from uh, Israel. Yes. And, yes. you know, all these foreign born uh, representatives who really wanted to get into politics. You have uh, an Asian American, uh, Kim, someone named yes, Kim. Yes, yes. So, we have a, a wide, um, wide array of cultures in the assembly, right. and I've actually sponsored resolutions um, for Czech American Heritage Month, uh, German American Heritage Month, and Swiss American Heritage Month. So, and uh, I have a colleague uh, who's presenting something on the floor today for Polish American Heritage Month. And we do celebrate many of the uh, ethnicities um, yeah. all around the world. Um, and it, it is good to, to learn about different cultures and to uh, appreciate uh, what it brings to America well, I'm and how it makes us a great nation, too. I'm waiting for an Israel Heritage Month. Yes, oh, it's something. coming. It's going to be coming. I, we'll have to, we'll have to sponsor it. Here, I haven't, yeah. <laughs> uh, it hasn't come up yet. So. No, we'll definitely have to look at so it. And everybody works together, uh, one big happy family in New York. And Absolutely. It is. It's really an incredible thing. See all the different fightings around the world, <clears throat> even North Korea, South Korea. They're all Koreans. You know, yes. What are you fighting with each other? Yes. You know, they're not even different peoples, let alone different peoples. It's yeah. something I think is remarkable. Absolutely. My, I always go by the slogan, you get further uh, with honey than vinegar. Yeah. So I always try to come to you know a, a, a good solution a peaceful solution with everything I'm more of a uh, a diplomat and a delegate and I try to you know uh, appreciate and help as many people as possible so Excellent. that's always been my philosophy now you were you were a super freshman because you were just elected last November yes yes so so you've only been in there maybe five months or so six months five months yes that's so correct. Yep. you know what's your experience been like and you didn't even take office right away because you had a close election yes it's actually it's so, been quite an experience yeah, uh, um, the past that. few months uh, when um, Annie Rabbit who was my predecessor she was elected as Orange County clerk she had held the seat for 10 years and uh, so she was elected in 2013 and had to resign January of 2014. Uh, when she resigned, created a vacancy, and we were waiting for the governor at that point to call a special election. But there were a various amount of uh, vacancies all around New York State uh, for assembly and Senate positions. So the governor decided not to call any special elections and to combine the special election for any vacancy with um, the actual general election that was held in November. So you yes. so, because it's, because yes. it's expensive. Exactly. Plus, have a special it is, election. Absolutely. It is expensive to hold another election. And, um, you know, it's a short amount of time to get your message out. And, to, mm. to, and you get, usually at these special elections, you get very, very low, low turnout. So um, to, to one advantage, it was, you know, it was a good advantage to, to have it in November because you get more of that turnout, um, you know, more awareness mm -hmm. of the election. The bad part about it was we were in the 98th district anyway without a representative for almost a year. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we had to go to our state senator 
um, who was John Bonasek in, in the Monroe part, is Senator Bill Larkin. We had to go to uh, the, both of those gentlemen, and also Senator Carlucci in the Rockland portion, uh, you know, for, for most of our state affairs. Um, you and know. you were the supervisor of Deer Park. Correct. Yeah, I was so, the town supervisor now, of the town Deer of Deer Park. Deer Park in your district map is all the way up on the northern quarter of your of the district, right? Yes, like, I call it the North Pole of the district. Yeah, and I yeah, actually yeah. live in the North Pole of the district in Westbrookville, which right. borders Sullivan County. And uh, it takes from my house to the bottom of the district probably about an hour and 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. So it is a big, long district. Uh, it's all of western Orange County yeah. going down into, um, you're looking at Port Jervis, Minisink, mm -hmm. um, Warwick, Port Greenville. Yeah. Right. Um, and then you have Monroe, Monroe, Tuxedo, and a little portion of Ramapo. About Kiryasho, a third. Yes. Which we'll get into in a little bit. Sure. But you had a close election. It was like only a few votes here or there. It wasn't decided Absolutely. until after November, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. We had actually a three-way race. Uh, I had a four-way Republican primary. Uh -huh. um, we came out on top in the, uh, in the primary and then the three-way race in November. Um, after a Democrat, Republican, Independent. Yeah, it was a Democrat, Republican, and um, an independent candidate. Mm -hmm. And um, the independent candidate drew a lot of votes. Um, primarily, uh, this was in the Monroe area. Um, he had taken a, a, a stance against the uh, leadership of the village of um, KJ or Curious Joel. Oh, really? Yeah. So, so this wasn't an Orthodox. Jew so no, no, it was. Uh, it was actually, um, you know, there's a huge issue happening, uh, which we can talk about later, um, uh, involving an annexation proposal uh, for the village of, of Curious Joel into Monroe. So that was one of the major uh, issues of the campaign, okay. and we all had various uh, positions on it. I tried to take more of a neutral position, saying I'm a state representative, I need to focus in on, on state issues. Um, this is more of a local issue that needs to be decided by the local fathers, and um, that was the position that I had taken. Okay. Some so, people did not like that, but... So tell know, me about the vote totals. Tell me about wh sure. when you actually took the oath Absolutely. So November, uh, I believe November 3rd was the election. Fourth. Our fourth, yes. So. And um, we, uh, after the, the votes were counted before the absentees, we were actually 10 votes behind the Democratic candidate. It was that razor thin. And uh, there was about 1,200 absentee ballots still left to count. So those um, took about a month, another month to count. We didn't uh, realize we were the winners until probably around mid-December, about December 12th or so. Um, and I and won eventually by. won by 38 votes. So yeah. it was still <laughs> very razor thin. But, uh, you know, I, I definitely, you know, want to build on that. And I've been trying to build well, on that the past five months, yeah. you know. So <laughs> okay. definitely we've been reaching out to all of the communities and uh, right. trying to, you know, get um, our name out there, the message out there, and uh, trying to do the best job I can. Okay, so. well, let's, and, and you know, you see, obviously, tough after a win like yeah, that. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Well, that, we were sweating. Well, it's a great story because, like, Andrea Stewart Cousins won by 36 votes. There were other people who won by those razor thin margins, but it took till, like, sometimes till February mm -hmm. before they got uh, courts to uh, rule on who was the actual winner. Sure. So I'm sure. surprised that it was the middle of December before you, so you, in January you were able to be seated. Yeah, well, we were, we were actually, um, we were projected to go out to February. So oh, having, it, having, yeah, having it end in December mm -hmm. was a blessing. Um, and then probably it ended around December the 12th, the count, and uh, I received a call from the minority leader uh, that um, I needed to um, resign as supervisor <laughs> that Sunday um, and take the oath of office as a, the new assemblyman on Monday. So uh, it was around December 15th, December 14th, December 15th that I took the office yeah. um, or took the oath and I filled the last two weeks or so of Annie Rabbit's term and then um, on January 1st, took the oath again right. uh, to start my own term I see. for so two you years. Really have, yes. You have seniority over any of the freshmen. Is that why Correct. you took the oath yes. in the middle of December? Correct. It, yep. So it I'm gives a, a um, more seniority by yeah, two I, weeks. I'm a freshman, but I have a little, That's uh, why I said you're a little more seniority. I'm a super freshman. <laughs> That's yes. That's right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I knew there was a point to my joke. I just wanted him to get <laughs> Absolutely. to it. Absolutely. <laughs> 
So, uh, le okay, so let's talk about, uh, well, in, you represent the town of Florida. Uh, yep, the village of Florida. Yes. Village of Florida, Wait which is in the town. How many Jews of... are in Florida? Ah, now, good. You know, I, everybody yes. wants to go to Florida. So yeah. You oh, can I know. Say, I know. All the Jews are. You but I have I, to go to a thousand <laughs> miles. You can go to Florida. <laughs> you go right to the village. I tell you, that's the big joke. Oh, we're going to Florida. They're like, wow, that's wonderful. And we're like, no, 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 no. We're going to the village of Florida. <laughs> the village of Florida is wonderful. The village of Florida is great, but it's not the state of Florida, obviously. So. But, well, uh, but we do enjoy the, the village. The state of Florida is the Holy Land. So when I told him mm -hmm. you represented Florida, he thought that that was the Holy Land. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> they will come visit you, Marco. Absolutely. Yeah, nice, nice warm weather, you know. Yeah. But, in the village but, of Florida. Yep. And, yep. and there was the town of Florida in Montgomery County where mm -hmm. the Thruway Bridge collapsed. Mm -hmm. So I was reporting for WABC at the time, uh -huh. and my lockout was Mark Ronich, w, uh, uh, the town of Florida, WABC News. Mm -hmm. And the news director called me and said, no one else is saying the town of Florida, and, the, and Florida's in Orange County, and this is Montgomery County. What are you doing? What are you confusing? I said, no, there are two Floridas in New York. One's a village, one's a town. Well, that's too confusing. Everyone knows Florida's in Orange County. What's this other thing with Florida? And she never thought that there could be two municipalities well, with sure. the same name in the state. And that has, that's probably seven or eight examples of that that I Yeah, found. we have, and so. even in my district itself, there are a ton of examples of that because we, as I said, I was a supervisor in the town of Deer Park. Well, we always received mail from Deer Park, New York. Uh -huh. And Deer Park, New York is Island. located in Long Island. Right. right. In With the, two in the, words. Yours is yes, one. Yes, mine's one word. Right. Theirs are two different words. So, And they have much more bigger population. They're like 28,000 people. We're 8,000 people in Deer Park. Your whole county has 28,000. Yeah, wow. yeah, well, a little bit more. But, <laughs> but, but and then uh, Greenville. Greenville's right. the same way. There's right. a Greenville in upstate and a Greenville in my so, town. So let's talk yeah. about Kiryash Joel. Let's talk about the, what's going on there because that's a really uh, tight-knit community, but it's also the most poverty-stricken community in the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, yes. you know, it, you wouldn't think that would be the case. So maybe you could give us your your yep. take on it and what you've seen, because I don't think you've been to Kiryas Yol before you started campaigning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very <laughs> rarely, yeah. Uh, very rarely. Right. Uh, we did so. go into the village toward the end of the campaign uh, to meet with uh, all of the officials there. Um, it, it's definitely, you know, uh, the village is growing in population. It's growing every year. Well, of course. And uh, absolutely. And it's, it's become... They wouldn't have since, it any other way. I, I believe right, it was right, the, right. Late, the late 1970s when it was established. And uh, from the late 70s to it now... So it's because of a high birth rate. Maybe our viewers that's know. Well, absolutely. There's a very high birth rate. That's why I said you wouldn't have it any other way. Well, <laughs> but people may not know. that People are migrating. They're all... Everybody's coming to the center. Yes. But it's mainly the Satmar community that's there? Uh, I believe so. Yes, yeah, yes. Okay. So... There's a, um, as I said, you know, a huge birth rate, and it's been growing since the late 1970s. So recently, there's been an issue, probably the past few years, of uh, annexation of a part of the town of Monroe, in which the village of Curious Jewel um, is uh, surrounded within, by. Yeah. It's within the town of Monroe. Um, there's been a lot of opposition from people outside of the village of Curious Joel. Like Woodbury? Um, in, uh, not just in Monroe, but in Woodbury and Blooming Grove, which is another town mm -hmm. that's uh, next to it. I'm just um, I'm not kidding. If it's surrounded by Monroe, so they're mm -hmm. a asking for more land in Monroe? In Monroe. Mo yeah, most of it. They're asking for about 507 acres <coughs> to annex in the town of Monroe to go into the village of KJ. So, but why so. is uh, the surrounding communities upset with that? Uh, well, because um, it'll bring a lot of high density housing, a lot of environmental changes, and you know they say it may bring more people up from New York City and increase the population. Again, changing the whole quality of life in the town of Monroe, um, which it definitely will. It absolutely will if that goes through. Um, now. There's two arguments to it. You know, you, you're seeing this population growth since the 1970s. You're not stopping that population growth. It's happening. So they are going to have to build more housing. Um, however, you know, there is opposition from the people that have lived there 
maybe more than uh, since the 1970s, since before the 1970s, uh, that they don't want to see their community change. It's always the, no, the NIMBY, not in my backyard kind of thing. Explain what but, you mean by annexation. Okay. Annexation is when you take a portion of uh, our land or a portion from another town or village and you incorporate it into your own town okay, or so village. Okay, so Kiryat Shoal wants a more, They want to expand more, their borders. Right, they want to expand right. their borders and, and take in more, uh, have less of the town of Monroe and more of the village of Kiryat Shoal. Correct, correct. Okay. They're going to, uh, their proposal is asking to take 507 acres from the town from of Monroe, Monroe and, make and it add the it village. into the village. Right now it's just town of but, Monroe, but, but now it would be part of the village. But why can't they just develop land in the town of Monroe and just... Have, live their lifestyle the way they want to live. Lifestyle. They can. They can. What do they have to They can. It? However, uh, they would prefer that that acreage be part of the village. That the well, village have argument? control well, over that. Well, it would be. You know, they would be under their local zoning codes, not the town of Monroe's, because you have different codes for yeah. the village of Curious Joel as opposed to the town of Monroe. So, in preference, they would rather have it in the village or, or fall under the village government rather than uh, the town government. So, But now, who's it up to then? I mean, you know, everybody's arguing, like I said, these towns around them. Mm -hmm. I mean, whose opinion counts? Well, right, you know, not yes. Not everybody gets a vote. Sure. It's a free country well, for your opinion. But. Absolutely. Right now, um, there was a, or I believe there was petitioning for that particular acreage to go into the village of uh, Curious Joel. So what happens is um, they started that process to bring that land over, and that was most of the landowners that owned the land of that 507 acres, they wanted to be incorporated into the village of so, Cajun. So did the Satmars start buying up the land in the town of Monroe? Oh, sure, sure, absolutely. Okay, so they started They're, buying up this 507 acres. Mm -hmm. So while it's the poorest, uh, mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. and getting the most in terms of food stamps and social services, mm -hmm. they still have money to buy land. Absolutely. Well, they, they probably uh, get various investors to buy those portions yeah, of land. But it takes just so. a few investors. It doesn't take the whole thing. Sure. Don't, it's not cheap in Orange County. It's sure. not cheap. No, no, land isn't cheap. Land, you know? land is expensive in um, Orange County. But what the argument has been now is uh, there have been um, environmental review or seeker, right. environmental review studies on whether or not this should go through. Or the annexation should go through. And don't you need a state um, law to be passed in order, like a, from a home rule message, they have to mm -hmm. pass it? You, you do have to sponsor yeah, well, something? Well, I, I'm definitely getting there, definitely getting there. So um, pretty much what happens is the DEC commissioner can decide who's the lead agency um, involved with this um, environmental quality uh, review, review study. Mm -hmm. um, the DEC decided uh, to make the village of Curious Joel the lead agency. So when that happened, uh, myself, Assemblyman Jim Scoofus as well, um, we had sent a letter to the DEC commissioner saying, you know, really, you, you shouldn't have the agency or the government that's petitioning for this annexation to be the lead agency. There should be an outside independent agency looking at this, whether it be the DEC, whether it be um, you know Orange County mm -hmm, itself, mm -hmm. because the, not just the 507 uh, annexation that's going to go into the village of KJ, it's going to create, again, a large high-density housing population. It's going to change the whole landscape of southern Orange County, and it's going to affect... the whole landscape. Oh, absolutely. And, and what will happen is um, it will spread out into other areas of the county. Well, it's, so, don't they want to spread out to Woodbury? Um, there have been proposals to do that. That's and there was actually, um, years back, in the town of Woodbury, they actually incorporated the village of Woodbury around the borders of the town of Woodbury. So they're actually right on top of each other. So the village so, is the same uh, borders as the town. Of exactly, Woodbury. except for a little portion of Harriman, right. which okay. is another village. Right. And the reason that was done was to prevent um, annexation of portions or portions of the town. Buffer zone. A buffer zone. Right, it was a buffer. Will. Exactly. So, so, so you're going to have to sponsor 
legislation, or you're not, or you're well, not in favor of sponsoring legislation. Well, what what I did it's was a political I, football. Isn't absolutely, it? it's okay. a big political football, and, um, and why I'm trying you? to do what's right and what's fair, and I've always tried to do what's right, and what's fair for everybody. So, in my opinion, what's right and what's fair is to having that independent agency look at this environmental quality review. Yeah. So to do that, I'd like to see again the county is doing an independent study right now of um, the possible effects of it. Um, I'd like to see the county play a bigger role. I had sponsored legislation or home rule legislation that would allow the county um, to approve any annexation, 99 acres or more, um, either to approve or disapprove. It would be uh, up to the county legislature to do that. Uh, however, uh, we uh, was met with some opposition on it uh, from the assembly majority. We received two memos, two home rule memos. Uh, they'll, and when you have a home rule bill, they'll send you a memo. You need a home rule message or a home rule resolution right. from the municipality. A request from uh, the home from the municipality. Exactly. Right. So this bill was for Orange County. So we originally received a letter from the assembly majority council, and it said, here you go, you need a home rule message from Orange County, New York. Great. So we notified Orange County, New York, and we said, listen, you're going to have to pass a resolution. And this was from Jim Yates? Um, I'm not sure what his okay. name is. But, but And why is James Scoofus involved in this? I'll, I'll get to that, definitely. Okay. That, that's next. Right, <laughs> so, we're running out of time. Oh, okay. So, okay. so then what happened was three hours later, we received another memo from the same council, and they said we needed... Orange County, New York, home rule message. But not only Orange County. We needed a home rule message from every municipality in Orange County, all 42, villages, cities, towns, including the village of Curious Joel and the town of Monroe. So right there, we knew we weren't going to get a home rule message from the village of Curious Joel or, or the town of Monroe or even the city of Middletown who had um, um, expressed opposition to the bill. So... That died in the water. At that point, we contacted Assemblyman Scoofus. He had an idea for a statewide bill uh, that would amend uh, what's called the 239 process. And this is a planning board process where um, if there's um, any major changes, uh, especially if it involves water or sewage um, in, in environmental quality review acts or anything, anything of that nature, what happens is uh, if you're changing any major scope of anything, the county has to review it, the county planning department. They will then give recommendations back to the municipal board on what to do if they're in favor of it or they're not in favor of the proposal. So, like, for example, like in the town of Deer Park, we changed our zoning. So that was a major change um, as far as uh, land use is involved. So we had to submit our proposal to the county planning department. They had 30 days to review it, and they said, well, we like this, we don't like this, and that kind of thing. Then the municipality, by a supermajority vote, can overrule the recommendations of the county. If they don't have a supermajority uh, vote, which is then they have to accept them. Which is 60%. That would be um, so four out of the five board right. members. Right. Okay, right. so it's 80. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, so now Assemblyman Scoofus, because he hasn't been on the show, yes. he's like 23 years old or something? He is 27 or 28 or 20, He's one point. of the youngest members Absolutely. to be elected in the Assembly. Absolutely. Yeah. And he had no, really legis no real legislative experience? Or yeah, I think he was a councilman in the town of Woodbury before. Councilman, yes. okay. Yes. And you're how old? I am 35. 35. 36 this year. Okay, Absolutely. Um, Thank you. But I just wanted, so, you know, the, You've had more experience, like with town government. Yes. Are you more disposed to favoring the town as opposed to the village because, you know, your mm -hmm. alliances are more with well with town I, officials and I'm definitely an advocate for for local government. I'm well, an advocate, you know, for uh, more local control. Um, I believe that, uh, you know, coming from running a town government. Uh, that's where you have most of the contact with your constituents. Once you get to the okay. upper levels, it's, you know. So the lobbying going on by the town and the village, mm -hmm. I mean, is that, are they putting pressure on you? Do they come up here and? Um, and we haven't received you, too much of a lobbying so they, effort personally. They just wait for you to come 
home, and then they go see you in Warwick. Yes, you, uh, well, we office. haven't. Well, we haven't really been contacted too much by. Uh, well, you're by making the village, all these decisions so. on their behalf when you must be talking to them. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. We're, we're actually we're in talks with um, Orange County government, the county executive. But why the not county interact with the village and the town also? I mean, just on as a courtesy. Mm -hmm. No. Well, they know what's going on, you know, and what we're trying to do is we're trying to look out for the county as a whole um, as far as this legislation is concerned. Because basically what happens is with the, with the proposal that Mr. Skoufis has um, that I'm co-sponsoring, okay. it adds annexation to that 239 process. So right now that's going through committees um, in the in the assembly. <laughs> Your head's we'll spinning, see, isn't it? We'll see what happens. You know, we'll definitely see what happens. But next year, though, or the year after, because it's we're not coming to a close now. We're about nine days right. left. We're not so going to happen here. No. It's it's possible though. It is possible. Okay. We know Senator Larkin is sponsoring it in the Senate. Okay. And um, he's moving it through the committees now in the Senate. Um, we're coming down to the deadline, so um, hopefully we'll have a decision by the end. Just a technical, you know. I know they say June is over. Do you, mm -hmm. you do come back, don't you, once no. in a while? Oh, no. 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 June 17th is the last really? day well, of session. It could yeah. be 18 or 19. Or it, it could be. They could extend know, it. Sure. A couple of days, but generally speaking, when they leave in June, it. unless the governor calls them back, which he's threatening to, uh, it's... Mm -hmm. That's it. It's, exactly. We won't see them until January, and we're safe. It's a part-time yeah. <laughs> part job. You're yeah, they say, All right. So well. now, let me just let the audience know, because the yes. first time you're here is that you graduated from Minnesink Valley High School in 97. Correct. Well, you are young. <laughs> uh, you earned your BA from Mount St. Mary College, and you have an MPA, which is a Master's of Public Administration, yes. from John Jay College of Criminal Justice. So you're no Correct. slouch. No, no. Okay. Definitely, we have so a lot I of just, education behind I just want to know, yes. I just want people to realize that you're... Um, what, what is this with the North Cricket Frog? North what Cricket is Frog. Uh, <laughs> yes, that the North Cricket Frog bill. Um, that was uh, originally an Annie Rabbit uh, yeah, I bill that I. But it's not I, a rabbit bill. It's no, a, no, it's now a Brabbitic bill because <laughs> I brought it back, um, and pretty much it's in the village of Florida, where um, we right. have a, a huge lake called Glenmere Lake in the village of Florida, and uh, the Glenmere Lake. Um, supplies a lot of the water um, supply to Orange County Jail, to the village, to surrounding communities. And what's happening is with that lake is there's oh, a certain weed that's growing. So in if, it's a, in da if the cricket's an endangered species, you can't use any, th any chemicals to control, to, the to weeds. control it. Correct. And therefore... It's getting out of control. Correct. So that's why you have to take it off the endangered species list, which yes. is what you're thinking of doing. Okay. Exactly. We that is we, that. But okay. unfortunately, I think that bill will be dying in the assembly. That's from the what I heard. No uh, I think the cricket okay. frog is safe for now. Okay. So. <laughs> and you want to ex increase the terms of office for the legislature to four years? Yes. So yes. you want each, you That would be a constitutional amendment. Exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, so it would have to pass this year and then another time and then, and the then go year. before the voters. Absolutely. And you want this because? Um, two Quickly. years. <laughs> yeah. Two years is very, very... You're always fundraising? You're always fundraising. It's very difficult for anyone to learn the job in two years. Okay. Um, I wouldn't be opposed to increasing the terms and maybe doing term limits, that could be a possibility too, uh -huh, or a compromise uh -huh. on that. But it's not likely uh, but, as, a as a freshman Republican or a super freshman Republican. Right, it's, you're it would be very, anywhere. very difficult to do. Okay. But, but it definitely, it's a proposal that I think makes sense. At least you're on record. You know, it's, I'm on record okay. that I'm in favor of that, okay. so we'll see what happens. And do you want to designate black dirt as the state soil to designate the black dirt region is home to the most fertile soil. Absolutely. Do you really need a bill like that? Pine Island, New York. We're very proud of Pine Island, New York. Uh, it's uh, where they grow all the onions over yes. in uh, New York State. Right. And, the uh, big Onion Festival. Big Onion Festival in Pine yeah. Island. We're very proud Should of them. we go there? Really and have if you want onions. Onions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Any time. Come down. Any time. But again, that was a rabbit bill that I inherited, and uh, there was a movement a few you years ago. You don't have ago. to inherit these if you feel oh, they're no, silly. But you know what? I think it's a great idea. You, you know, do. We have official bird. We have an official flower. Why not have an official soil? So that's yeah, why official I Official food. Yeah, that's official so food. We yep. that Can we get food. an official rabbi? <laughs> there you go. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. And you want to provide an extension for the suspension of driver's licenses for persons serving 
on full-time active military duty. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Is this you don't have West Point in your district? Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> but we are a proud supporter of our armed forces and our veterans, and whatever we can do to help them out, we're in favor of. So this would be where they wouldn't have to pay extra for vanity plates or something, or what? Uh, wait, let me see. Uh, what, what was the? Can you name no, that you, bill again? You or? can't see. No. No. Just, I, it's down. We have one minute left. Uh, okay. You better read the bill fast over here. Yes. Um, yeah, it's just uh, pretty much an exception if they are in active duty, they're overseas. Um, oh. As far as the suspension of the driver's license, I see. they would have to deal with it when they got back. I but see. you know, okay. for that period of time, I, they would be. Exempt. I just think you're coming up with, you know. A, Interesting bills, but sure. ones that are kind of light for now. But, Those are some know. light bills, but I do have ideas on property tax reform, on reforming the Common Core, we uh, uh, Common Core education uh, well, curriculum. We're going to have to get which. To uh, you know. Yes or no? EITC, Education Investment Tax Credit, are you yes. in favor? Or? In favor. In favor, good. Yes. Okay. Yes. Close it out. Can, can, uh, yes. Push that through. You got it one more week. Yes, in we do. Case, thank you. You're, like Mark says, you're very new, but you're full of vitality, a few, full you. of good ideas. So we wish you continued success in your endeavor. Thank yes. you so much. much and success. it was definitely a pleasure to be here today. And anytime I'll come back. Great. We'll have you so, back. Thank you.